Our gospel reading for this morning comes from John's gospel. It is a portion of the trial scene in that gospel after Jesus has been arrested and handed over to Pilate. If you read the entire scene, there's a certain almost comic element to it as Pilate, the guy in charge, runs back and forth from where Jesus is inside to the Jewish authorities who are outside, buffeted back and forth by the questions that Jesus asks, and then has to run, go check with the Jews, and then come back to Jesus. We, we hear just a brief piece of that where Pilate has returned from one of his trips outside. Listen for what the Spirit would speak to us today. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born. And for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I were forced to choose... I would probably say that the best show on television, certainly the funniest, is The Colbert Report on Comedy Central. If you're not familiar with it, Colbert is a real person, but also a character. A parody of an egotistical, conservative, uh, cable news talk show host, and also one of the better satirists since Will Rogers. One of the recurring features on the show is a segment called The Word. Always introduced with the phrase, and that brings us to tonight's word, eliciting wild screams from the studio audience. The segment occurred on the premiere episode of The Colbert Report way back in October of 2005. And that night's word was truthiness. Truthiness made fun of the all-too-common practice among talk show pundits of speaking of things as if they were true that were merely the opinions of the speaker. Uh, Colbert says that facts are not things that you get from books, but that you feel in your gut. (laughs) That's where the truth comes from, ladies and gentlemen, the gut, Colbert says. Did you know that you have more nerve endings in your stomach than you have in your head? Look it up. Now, someone's going to say, I did look that up, and it's wrong. (laughs) Well, mister, that's because you looked it up in a book. Next time, try looking it up in your gut. (laughs) Now, for some reason, the word truthiness caught on. You can find all sorts of articles about it. It's actually listed in the new Oxford American Dictionary, credited to Colbert. The American Dialect Society named it their word of the year for 2005 defining it as the quality of preferring concepts and facts one wishes to be true rather than concepts and facts known to be true. 
And I suspect that the word caught on because it so perfectly describes the sort of thing that sometimes get passed off as facts. But I wonder if it doesn't also resonate simply because we humans have such a difficult relationship with truth. We say we value the truth, but we struggle actually to speak it. We feel the need to embellish it, to contextualize it, to spin it. We just completed an election cycle in which truth was often in short supply. And we both seem to expect this and accept it. Lying does little to discredit a candidate. And they seem to think that we would prefer to hear lies rather than truth. And, and maybe they're right. After all, we lie about how fast we were going when the cop pulls us over. The football player insists that he really caught the ball, even though it clearly bounced off the ground. We pad or fudge our resumes because everybody does it. Maybe the line from the movie is right. We can't handle the truth. Not that that's anything new. Pilate has trouble with the truth. He's unimpressed with Jesus' claim to be about the truth in our gospel reading for today. Pilate knows what a slippery thing truth is. He knows about truthiness, even if he doesn't know the word. What is truth? He asks. But Jesus says his kingdom is about truth. He came to reveal truth and those that belong to the truth heed his voice. Truth is a really big deal in John's gospel. In the beginning of the gospel, in the prologue, where it says that Jesus is the word made flesh, it also says that the law was indeed given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The categories of light and darkness are also big deals in John's gospel. And the world often prefers the darkness, but Jesus says, those who do the truth come to the light. Our gospel reading this morning is one of the more artfully constructed scenes in all the Bible. It is part of a much larger reading, and while it's sometimes referred to as Jesus on trial before Pilate, if you go beyond our reading today and look at the whole trial scene, you will see that Pilate is not in charge at all. He is on trial much more than Jesus. He scurries back and forth between Jesus and the Jewish authorities who are outside. By title, he is the most powerful man in Jerusalem. But in fact, he is trapped. He is caught up in his own fears about what may happen if he doesn't execute Jesus. He is trapped by political expediency. He is living a lie. Jesus offers him an escape. He offers him a chance to come clean to speak the truth about the proceedings. Do you ask me if I'm a king on your own or did others tell you about me? But Pilate is scared of the truth. And so he changes the subject, asking a different question. What did you do? Jesus doesn't really answer him. He instead circles back to the question about kingship. He says, his kingdom is not worldly, not the sort that threatens Pilate's position, at least not in any traditional manner. As proof, he points out that none of his followers fight to keep Jesus from being handed over. No, his kingdom is not from this world. And at this point, I think we often misunderstand Jesus, although I don't know that Pilate does. Jesus does not say his kingdom is somewhere else, 
as in off in heaven. Jesus says its origins are heavenly. His kingdom is not from this world, but it is clear that it is already here and present. His kingdom is about truth, and those who belong to the truth hear his voice and respond to his voice, and so are already a part of that kingdom. But this is too much for Pilate. This is the second time Jesus has offered him an opportunity to step into the truth, but he's having nothing of it. He's not going to claim who he truly is, what motivates him, what traps him and controls him. And so he dismisses Jesus and his reign of truth. What is truth? Truth is about reality. We tend to think of truth as merely about accuracy, a measure of reliability or dependability. We know that the statement, the sun will come out tomorrow, is true because it is completely reliable and dependable. Other statements are less so. I'll get right on that. It's almost done. It'll be ready tomorrow. But... And in the Bible, and especially in John's Gospel, truth is much more than a measure of accuracy or reliability. Truth is a, an understanding, a reality even, a way of living that is in tune with God, a way of perceiving that is in tune with God. In John's gospel, it can speak of doing the truth, mean to live in ways that are in conformity with God's will, and Jesus is the embodiment of that. That is why we can speak of Jesus as the Word made flesh, as incarnation. His presence is revelation. It reveals truth the true nature of life, life with God and life with others. And that truth creates a kind of crisis. That's what happens with Pilate. He comes face to face with truth, but he is caught up in the ways of the world. And so he steps away, dismissing truth. What is truth? Truth is about the nature of reality. And so is Stephen Colbert's truthiness. Truthiness isn't simply a refusal to believe in facts I don't like. It is the construction of a reality that feels right to me, that conforms to what I want and what I feel in my gut. Truthiness is much more powerful than academic or intellectual understandings of truth because truthiness defines my world and governs how I will live. Now, like Pilate, we are all caught up in the ways of the world to some degree. We are governed by its truthiness. And so we struggle to fully embrace Jesus and his ways. Our guts tell us that it just can't be right that true life, abundance, and eternal life is about living in ways completely in tune with God's will. It can't be that we really need to be transformed, that our lives need to be totally reoriented, radically turned towards God and the other. But because God so loves the world, because God so loves us, 
Jesus continues to confront our truthiness with his divine reality, longing for us to trust him. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to bear witness to the truth, to God's reality, to the true nature of all things. Everyone who belongs to the truth, to God's reality, to that kingdom that the world cannot yet see, listens to my voice. Truthiness or reality? All praise and glory to the one whose love comes to us in Jesus and invites us into the truth. Thanks be to God.